Hello everyone, this is Ron from iTech Legion and this is the Arctic Freezer i30 CPU cooler and in case you're not familiar with Arctic's product line, they have a separate uh, CPU cooling line for their AMD and Intel uh, heat sinks. As you can see the i means it is for Intel. It's actually compatible only with the latest Intel Saga 2011, LGA 1155 as well as 1156 motherboards. It is not compatible unfortunately with LGA 1366 or LGA 775 uh, motherboards and uh, let's start unboxing what well, it looks like it's in there comes in a center box not the uh, uh, not in the old clamshell packaging that the freezer pro came with and here at the top you can find uh, plastic cover let's pull that aside and you get a syringe now uh, the the old freezer uh, arctic cooling freezer 30 and freezer, uh, all the previous uh, freezer cooling uh, heat sinks used to come with, uh, with a thermal paste pre applied. Now, this one is the MX4 and it comes in a syringe form so you can apply it yourself. And also inside, you get the heat sink itself, you can see there, in the sheer size of it. It is quite larger compared to other uh, Arctic coolers and also has the 120 millimeter fan that is already installed there. You can just easily remove that. See there? It has its own mounting socket and you can re replace this. This is actually the, I believe the F12 PWM fan and uh, see the uh, see the heat pipes there and the uh, aluminum finisher 5 millimeter space I believe and you also have underneath you get the direct touch heat pipe. See there? And it, it has no nickel in between that. You just have the copper directly into that and uh, let's put that aside and in case you didn't hear me mention that it is a PWM fan and also inside this box you get manual for installation with the let's see what we get here you get the LGA 1111 and LGA 1156 mounting and also a list of accessories just in case you open it and it's missing uh, a couple of screws and finally we have here actually there's two more items here we have at the bottom you have a uh, back plate for LG1155 and LG1156 it also has an adhesive backing there let's remove that and the last one is the last bag of screws has the mounting kit so I'm gonna go over this uh, more in detail and uh, let's go into a closer detail now and I'm going to show you how to install this Arctic Freezer i30 CPU cooler into an Intel LJ1155 motherboard. I have all the accessories laid out here in front and also we have our LJ1155 motherboard. And now uh, the LJ1111 motherboard uh, installation is slightly different but I will uh, mention that as we go along. Uh, first let's go over the accessories here. You have a pair of uh, tiny screws and these mounting plates. We're going to put that on top. You need these for both LJ1155 and 2011 sockets. You also have the back plate which is only useful for LJ1155 and LJ1156. Since the LJ1111 comes with its own back plate integrated already in the socket. Also, we get these stickers four stickers for the uh, plastic standoffs. You have four plastic standoffs and four long screws which are for the LJ1155 and LJ1156 and for the LJ1111 you get metal spacers so these ones you get four of them and these shorter screws so I was gonna put those aside since we're not gonna use that for the installation and also you get the syringe for the um, thermal compound and so now let's put the accessories we're going to use here on the left side while I drag the motherboard here. As you can see we have uh, LG1155 and LG1156. Put your CPU in there and uh, you can see that the, the sockets have a, a see-through hole there. And let's just move it to the back here and let's put in our uh, back plate. You can see that it will fit there. You have to remove the cover first. It has an adhesive so that uh, it sticks to the back and uh, 
it essentially becomes a uh, you don't need multiple hands to mount it because of the adhesive since it will stay there unlike other uh, unlike other backplates you have to mount so after that we're going to flip it over and we're going to now install these spacers and so I move the camera a little bit closer now so you can see that the back plate is in there it has those uh, threads at the back and we are going to put the plastic standoffs and uh, in order for these standoffs to stick you need to put these adhesives it's quite small so it, it takes a little bit of delicate touch to uh, to put it on make sure you do that and then we're going to go back after I have done this all right, now we have our standoffs. We are now going to put the mounting plate. And uh, these, of course, you need to uh, determine how you want to align your uh, heat sink, whether you want it in a push-pull with the, with the fan blowing out here to the back, or, or do you want it vertical, as in blowing up to the top. So uh, if you want to blow out to the top, you'll arrange it like so. If you want it to vertical, uh, you want it horizontal and blowing out to the back, you will arrange it like so. So that's pretty much it. You need to take these screws, lock it in place into the mounting holes, and then uh, we have a perfect spot to mount our heatsink. So we're going to do that now, and uh, you can see what the end result is. All right, here I have finished screwing the mounting plate here for what we can just put in our heatsink. And uh, again, if you are using an LG 2011, you need to use the metal mounting uh, standoffs here. What we didn't use, we didn't install it in 2011, we installed it in LG 1155. So we screwed it with the plastic standoffs and we used the inner holes. You're going to use the inner hole, which are the larger ones for the LG 2011. Also, I'm going to mount it in a push-pull standard configuration where the air will be blowing out in the back. So I've mounted it like so. And before we do that, uh, you are going to use these two screws to screw your heatsink into these two holes here. Before we do that, we're going to take a quick overview on uh, the heatsink and see how it looks like and uh, a little bit more detail on it before we proceed with the installation. Yeah, so here I have the Arctic i30 heatsink and it already comes with the fat reinstall so we need to take that out first before we proceed with installation. You just simply cut it out and as you can see it is a reusable fan. You can replace it with any 120 millimeter fan you have. Uh, you just need to unscrew it here in the front using hex screws. And uh, comes with a PWM fan as you can see there. Uh, actually most of the Arctic uh, products come with a PWM fan especially the heat sinks. So let's put that aside and take a look at what it looks like here. You have these uh, five millimeter aluminum fish. You can see that they are uh, really thick. This is what I love about the Arctic heat sink. They have a very very durable fan and they have also this really thick eight millimeter uh, heat sinks which have the direct contact. It has a particular cover there. Of course, uh, for those who are familiar with heat sinks, direct contact heat sink gave you the uh, most optimal cooling since they, it, uh, it, there's no nickel uh, in between them to kind of uh, be an intermediary and you can see what the, the surface looks like there. So a little bit, uh, it's not the most reflective surface but it uh, is well, well polished enough and uh, you can see the mounting holes there for where our screws will go in. And uh, of course, uh, there are different mounting methods, not mounting methods, but rather uh, application of heat sinks for uh, HDT or direct contact thermal uh, surfaces like this one. And uh, what Arctic recommends is that you actually use a syringe, that's why they have a tiny syringe here, to apply them uh, kind of in a, uh, each of the, of the uh, heat pipes here will get a sliver of uh, a thermal compound of course uh, it depends on how you want it. some people want to uh, kind of put a little bit of uh, a dab a little bit of thermal face in there and then shrub it around but I'm just mentioning that Arctic recommends that you uh, apply a sliver of thermal paste across the each of the heat pipe surface and then the pressure when you mount it will evenly uh, distribute it around the surface of the heat sink uh, so that's pretty much it. Now we're going to do that. We're going to apply a thermal paste and then we are going to mount it. I'm going to show you how to mount it into the motherboard itself. All right, here we have our motherboard once again and we are going to install it, of course, with the fan blowing through the back. So I'm going to mount it like so with the flat surface here in the front and here they cut out here at the back. So we just place it down, make sure that it matches the mounting holes. There you go. Snug fit. 
and you can see the mounting hole there and we rotate it you can see the mounting hole here on the front as well so that's it just take our screwdriver take a screw lock it in place uh, now arctic co cooling uh, recommends that you do it of course uh, don't do it completely on one side so do it about a quarter way at a time so that you don't uh, unevenly distribute the pressure now for, for when you're screwing the mounting holes uh, rather the uh, the standoffs it's not doesn't really matter if you screw them halfway or a quarter way at a time since it doesn't have the pressure on the CPU but for this one you need to take each one slowly just alternate in between each rotation it's evenly distributed until it is completely 100% in place once you can no longer move the screwdriver that means it is completely secure And almost done here. And it no longer moves. There we go. And once that is done, you can see there, it is completely secure. And we are now just going to install the fan that we removed. And make sure to look for the four pin helium fan here in our motherboard. We got an optional uh, CPU connector there for the second fan. You just need to put it on the primary one and then just snap it back in place. Uh, the lock is actually here on the side, so it will be like this. You can see that there's grooves here on the side for the fan holder to grab onto. And there we go. We now have our Arctic cooling i30 CPU perfectly ready. And uh, just as you can see there, it's perfectly. So I could lift the motherboard with the backplate and the heatsink installed from there alone. Perfect pressure. Now I'm going to install it into our case and make sure that the uh, to test out the Arctic cooling i30 heatsink and how well it performs. Before we proceed with testing, uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be asking about the clearance issues and as such here we have a four slot dim and uh, I've installed a low profile dim on the first slot here as you can see that it is uh, it is possible to install a low profile RAM as this naked PCB although installing anything higher is impossible on the first dim slot although if you only have a pair of DDR3 modules you can install them on the alternating second and fourth slots this one let me demonstrate that uh, it is possible to install that there and it uh, doesn't even touch the heatsink itself there you go and uh, we should proceed now with the rest of the review with the benchmarks and see how well the Arctic cooling i30 performs in stock and overclocked benchmarks and uh, if you like the review you can Subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash hlreviews. We have daily updates. You can read the rest of the review at www.hightechlegion.com. And leave questions or comments below. And uh, don't forget to like or thumbs up the video if you like us. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Alright, so now we've seen the benchmarks, now it's time to summarize the things that we liked and disliked about the Arctic Freezer i30. Uh, one thing I like the most is that the PWM fan is very quiet. This is the Arctic, uh, I believe, F12 PWM fan and it's very, very quiet. Even at the maximum 1350 RPM, it's still a lot quieter compared to other heat sinks. Uh, and it managed to also uh, manage the thermal levels uh, quite low and uh, around the same level actually as the other uh, direct touch heat pipe fans uh, and heat sinks as you can see here uh, the build quality is excellent compared to other heat sinks and uh, the price the price range is a little bit uh, different because uh, usually Arctic is known for offering product uh, products which are a very good balance of price performance ratio the Arctic Freezer i30 is not any different the only problem is that, of course, the market for uh, under $40 direct touch heat pipe and single fan, PWM fan uh, heat sinks is quite crowded. So the i30 has plenty of competition such as the 
uh, Cool Master Hyper uh, 22 Evo we tested with it. They, they produce the same results, but it does have some advantages over the Freezer i30. Uh, unfortunately, the Freezer i30 is limited in mounting to the LGA 2011 and LGA 1155 and LGA 1156. So that leaves users of the LGA 1366 and AMD mounting uh, out of the loop. So unfortunately, they can't use this cooler unless they get the Freezer a30. And which is specifically for the AMD. They have pretty much the same profile, the same uh, heat uh, heat sink design, but the mounting is for the AMD. And also uh, the mounting for this one is you can only mount a single fan that comes with it. You, there's an option for a push pull configuration, and there's an option to install an additional fan in the back compared to other uh, coolers. So that is uh, one unfortunate part about it. In terms of price, uh, right now the MSRP is $45.99 according to Arctic's website, but the lowest price I've seen is an Amazon at $37.99, which is very good. Although still, compared to the competition, it still uh, costs about $5 more even at the lowest price range. And at $45.99, we're doing around $7 or $10 more compared to other direct touch heat pipes, uh, helium fan heat sinks, which uh, pretty much have the same result. And uh, it is large, and another fortunate thing is that the clearance is that it has a clearance issue with the dim on the first uh, dim slot. If you, if you have it in a uh, push, uh, rather in a uh, in a orientation where it blows to the back of the case, so the first dim slot will be obscured. If you have a low profile RAM or a memory that does not have a heatsink. It, it can actually clear that and you can fully populate all, all four dim slots of your LG1155 or LG1156 motherboard. But if not, you can only install it on uh, two of them on the second and the fourth dim slot so that it clears the, uh, the freezer i30 heatsink. And um, I mean, other than that, uh, it's still a very good cooler. For the price, if the price was lowered a bit by just five dollars or even ten dollars, that all oh, that's a big, big dump, big jump, and uh, if I would give it a an energy choice for that, or rather, I give it a gold energy choice if it managed to have a lot more matting options. But unfortunately, I have to give this a silver award. Big, I would have to. Uh, because just because of the limited mounting options, despite the fact that it performs very well and it performs it quietly. It is limited in mounting capability and also because of the fact that there are plenty of competition in this price range and uh, the Arctic needs to, uh, there's plenty of competition for the Arctic Freezer i30 in that price range and uh, it's hard for a, a cooler like this to compete in that price range if there are that many good coolers which offer pretty much some advantages on this one with at a lower price point. So that pretty much can, uh, finishes the, this review and you can leave questions or comments below or uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash hightechlegion and uh, thumbs up this video if you like this review. We have daily updates. Uh, we release videos daily so you can subscribe to get updates on that. Also you can leave questions or comments below or on our Facebook at facebook.com slash hglreviews. We try to answer questions as often as we can and we also have giveaways. Especially right now we are having a uh, a Christmas giveaway for holidays you can just uh, just for being a member of our forum or a member for our, our Facebook you could win and you can just play up details there on our website so that is pretty much the the end of this review and again thanks for watching and see you next time